the talent pipeline, building a diverse talent pipeline. And the way that we do that is through exposure. So our hypothesis, coming as a scientist, our hypothesis is that there aren't enough women in this field because they don't know how awesome it is. And I think that's, there you go, there you go. And I mean from an engineering perspective, and also from a surgical perspective. So this group right here, I know there's some surgeons, some engineers, um, so I'm, I'm speaking to both here. So this problem can be solved through hands-on exposure at the right time points. And those time points we figured out are late in high school for STEM-inclined females and also first and second year of medical school. And I'm proud to talk today about a new initiative to also reach both men and women at the middle and high school level. So we'll talk on all of those. Perry program believes in hands-on exposure, real world experiences and real world discussions. So if you've ever been to one of our six hour workshops for girls, they're called Perry outreach programs for high school girls, you know that it's straight talk. It's straight talk about what it means to be a CEO of a company and have a family. It's straight talk about coming up through the pipeline and some of the challenges that you may face. It's straight talk about getting your own stuff together so that you can go into these fields because they're highly competitive. And we also stress mentoring. So we're not there just for that one day, we're there for a lifetime. And I'm proud I got one of my mentees here. This is Manuela Restrepo. Um, we believe in following people through the journey. So Manuela was a participant in the program three years ago and she's just graduating this year in biomedical engineering from University of Delaware, which is my home institution. So we have over 40 programs nationally. So we are on the road pretty much every weekend a year at some different place across the country running these six hour exposure programs. We also run three hour programs for medical students that are the same kind of content but in more of a case study format at their level. So we're age appropriate. So the typical high school program, six hours long, they do six surgeries. It is controlled chaos with power tools. It's awesome, okay, and lots of talks. We reach 3,500 young women per year through these two programs. And it's working. It is working. This is data from our 2012 follow-up study, which is three years follow-up, tracking our cohort. What are they majoring in in college? They are majoring in STEM, in particular engineering and biomed sciences at rates five times the national average. So we're doing it. It's working. We're going to put out a follow-up study, uh, another follow-up study from in 2015 this year uh, with our entire cohort, which now includes over 3,600 young women. So it's working. We've built the pipeline, and now it's time to increase, for my engineers out there, it's time to increase the flow, right? We're going to pump more volume through this now, OK? It's time to turn on the power hose. To do that, we need to get to teachers, okay? So at running at max speed with my nonprofit, okay? We can reach 3,500. There are only, what, 52 working weeks per year, okay? So, and we can run one, maybe two of these per weekend. We need to reach more people, and it, at this point, it's also time to reach out and to have a co-ed audience, too, okay? So how can we get this great curriculum to the people who are training students that we want to come in. We need to reach teachers. I've been hearing this for years. I love your curriculum. How can I get it in my classroom? These are teachers that come and visit us at our programs. And I say, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get you that Zimmer X-Fix set that took me two years of begging to get, right? I don't know how I'm going to get you $5,000 worth of power tools and everything else. It's really, really tough. So we first went out and we talked to teachers. We said, what are the characteristics you want in your classroom? What is working that you're seeing right now? And they said, it's got to be sticky, right? It's got to be engaging to these kids, particularly when there's cell phones and all the other stuff that's happening, all right? Second thing is it needs to work in my classroom. That means it's got to fit in a, in a typical uh, one hour to 90 minute block scheduling. It's got to work in physics classrooms all the way down into middle school into gen science classrooms. 
It's got to be a good value. This is huge, huge for teachers, obviously, right? It's got to fit in their budgets. It's got to work. So we brought a teacher onto the team. This is my colleague, Amy Troutner. I love Amy Troutner, okay? If you have ever worked with a, this, she is a middle school science teacher. Oh my God, okay? She's a tank, man. She can, she can command a classroom like nobody else, and she knows what good product is. So she helped us flesh this out. What does sticky mean? Well, it's got to map to standards, right? Nothing gets into a classroom nowadays unless it maps to next generation science standards. Also helped us with age appropriateness. Okay, run time of the lesson. We went out and we asked, how long should this be? How much time are you willing to train as a teacher to learn how to deliver orthopedics themed content? And pricing, how much should this cost? So the next thing we did after we talked to Amy was we brought in our crack team of engineers. These are young students, uh, so seniors. This was one of their senior projects. Manuela is one of our inventors of this kit, incredibly proud of them. And they spent a semester working on this. Manuela stayed on with Emily, uh, and they continued to build uh, this curriculum. First thing they did was they went out and we talked to teachers in our network. We have a huge network of teachers through Project Lead the Way, which is our national partner. They are the world's largest provider of STEM curriculum, engineering themed STEM curriculum. They reach 600,000 students per year uh, in American schools. We went out, we surveyed them and said, how much are you willing to pay? How much are you willing to pay? How long are you willing to train? Do you think this is a good idea? So do you think this is a good idea? The universal response was yes, even to people that have never heard of us. All right, after that, this team went out and actually looked at the code book for orthopedic procedures. I forced them, I'm sorry Manuela, to look at every possible orthopedic procedure that could be performed and give me feedback on whether or not it would work in a classroom. We also had a benchmark. We had a, a kit that we took out to classrooms just for fun. It was scoliosis diagnosis. Actually, these are my x-rays because I consented to it, so, <laughs> so we're, we're homegrown here. All right, so they had, the kids have to go out and they have to measure a curve, right? They have to, using Cobb angle technique. What are they doing when they're doing that? They're doing geometry, complementary and supplementary, supplementary angles, multiple repeat measures. It's beautiful. All right, so taking this as a theme, looking at all 200 procedures, they went out. They developed five separate modules. This was an iterative process, okay, and took it straight into the classroom, okay? So we heard in the development of this whether this stuff was working from day one, and it was. These kids blew it away blew it away. Kids are more engaged, they understand the connection between engineering and surgery. Boom! Huge, right? This is not the end of the story. Today, we are proud to say that we are officially launching uh, our new product, which is called Orthopedics in Action, with Sawbones. Sawbones is our manufacturer and distributor. So since, uh, this has all happened since August. Since August, we have been focused on this project. So everything you see here has been nine months in the making. We developed a contract with Sawbones to manufacture and distribute all the hands-on material that goes with this. We hired a graphic artist, God bless her heart, I'll show you what she did in a moment. Um, we developed professional development, videos, slides, student worksheets, the whole deal. And uh, we landed two wonderful corporate sponsors who are helping going to get this material out. So we're giving away our first sets of curriculum to teachers starting next week. Zimmer and Stryker, thank you very much. There are five unique lessons. These are, these are those. Please come by our booth, which is 4237, the Sawbones booth, to check them out in person. Okay, but you'll see tendon tear, uh, X-Fix, uh, we've got examination of a knee, um, we have an awesome little working hand model. Um, all of these appropriate for 7 to, to 12th grade classrooms. Um, they reinforce math and science through cross-cutting cross concepts that are used in orthopedics. And they're doing engineering challenges, right? Everything is hands-on. Every single lesson starts with a case study. This person developed this injury doing this, right? We got a rock climber for the hand one, okay? How are you gonna fix it? What is the engineering behind that? And also using good experimental technique, like what we've just seen in the last two presentations. This is an example of what it looks like. So you can see here we got ourselves some physics, and again, our graphic artist did a beautiful job. So this is all given to the teachers, as well as a video that walks through it. This is for tendon tear, so they're doing two different stitching techniques, repeated testing, uh, to basically figure out that doing a running stitch on a tendon probably isn't that good of an idea. It'll pull right through, right? But something like a blanket stitch or a modified crack owl would be awesome, okay? So, that is what I had to tell you about orthopedics in action. 
We are very pleased to have Sawbones as a partner. Um, this is an incredible thing that, that we're hoping is going to take off in the classrooms. And uh, come visit us, come check out what we're doing. And thank you to everybody who's helped in this effort.